Good morning, everyone. Heather, I love that song. I haven't heard that in, like, since I was young. That was awesome. That's just been a day or two. It's great to have you. We just appreciate you coming. Folks are still coming in, and we, we rejoice with you today. We're uh, sorry that Brian and Carlotta are leaving us. They're going to Tennessee. You know, God's in Ohio, too. <laughs> We don't have to go to Tennessee for him, but anyhow, we love you guys, and we're going to miss you so much. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Praise the Lord. It's going to be a great day. We're looking forward to it. Come on, let's worship the Lord together as we sing, and would you stand with us and just worship God together, all right?
ways that there is light displayed in our lives is through the sentiments portrayed in our mission statement. Would you join me in the reading? To be transformed by Jesus and to lead our community to him. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated, and Sister Katie is going to come and fill us in on a few things. A lot of things. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Isn't it great to be here in the house of the Lord? I always have a mood lift when I come here. <laughs> That's why I swear I need Wednesday night services to come back because that kind of boosts you up midweek and then you can go on. So I just have a couple quick announcements about our church and about NMI. So um, as you know, NMI is um, all of our missions kind of um, eff efforts. So can you go to the next slide? Uh, so we're gonna continue with our school supply packs and crisis care kits. And this morning I assembled, we have one box so far of the, um, the crisis care kits. We need, um, you know, school supply pack. I'm still kind of getting those together and making that, making that work. Um, but in, in your way out the door, there's um, two gallon bags with the list inside and then there's also the, um, the list inside for the crisis care kits and then there's also the school supply list is on the bulletin board. And starting in September, you know, twice a year, we collect for Alabaster. Alabaster is used to fund the, um, the building and the materials for schools, hospitals, parsonages, churches, the stuff that, you know, they need, the, the supplies that they need. And so I don't know if any of you are new to the church, but this is an alabaster box, and um, it's got a slit in it for your change. Like if you just want to, at the end of each day, throw your change in there um, or, you know, whatever would suit you best. I know Pete's going to write a check because he's, <laughs> he's always talked about that. So um, just however you want to give to alabaster. It's going to be on the last Sunday of September, which is September, I don't know, you September 20th. No, excuse me, that's that. Um, it's going to be on su Sunday, September 25th is our last um, Sunday in September. So um, after that, that be taken over to the church. Okay. I wanted to also introduce you to our new sponsored child. If you have been around for a while, you know we had Boti for a long time in, the, in um, Thailand. This little boy is in, um, his name is Vikram, and he is in India. And Thoti... Um, you know, became an adult, and so they, that, you know, we supported him all the way through to early adulthood, so um, they automatically give you a new child, thankfully, so I didn't even have to do any paperwork or anything, which is cool. So Vikram, he is um, 10 years old, he's in the fifth grade, he lives in India with his father, mother, one brother, and three sisters, to give you an idea. At home, he likes to help his mother, he likes to sing, and he likes to play croquet in his spare time, so... There you go. So, um, so I just wanted to kind of give this, you know, some backdrop to that, so that we understand like how important it is to have these sponsored children. Um, there's a population of about 1.38 billion people in India. It's the second most populous country in the world. More than six percent of the population lacks access to safe water, and about 15 percent of India's population practice open defecation. The lack of household water connections and toilets contributes greatly to waterborne um, illnesses and stunting and death. And so the fact that we can sponsor this child, he has access to clean water. There's about 91 million people without clean water. And I don't know about you, but I really take, take that for granted. I get up in the morning and turn my faucet on and there's just like no thoughts or questions about that. So thankfully, our sponsorship of um, Vikram will allow him to have clean access to water. It gives him education. And also, they do cultural things as well, playtime and cultural like things that um, we, you know, again, have in our country that they may not necessarily have access to in India. So just to give you a, an idea, too, about, I looked this up, adult literacy rates. Um, so about 73% of adults, male, male adults have had an education and are literate and only about 47% of girls or women. And then in that 15 to 24 age group, I'm not sure why that's flipped like that as far as like many more females in that older age group seem to have literacy and males about 84%. So in our country, it's 
well into the 90s, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. So at any rate, um, so it is an important part of the work that we do here at um, our mission field, you know, to get out and, um, you know, they're also given the opportunity to share Christ. So next slide. So they can attend India's Child Developmental Center. They have a safe, enriched environment for the child to grow and learn. Um, and it also provides support for health things, such as immunization, safe drinking water, medical checkups, and nutritious food every week, and then emotional and educational support. But even beyond all of that, even more far-reaching is the fact that they're given the opportunity to accept Christ. They're given the instruction and admonition of Christ, which I think it trumps the others, but of course the others are needed as well. So, um, so we'll continue to give to, for Vikram. You know, we'll continue to give for that as well. So the last thing is um, I just wanted to update you all as the church board secretary about our pastoral search and what's going on with that. As you know, our church did not support the, um, the uh, uh, affirmation. Yeah, yeah, our church did not support, what did you say, Heather? Affirmation vote. Affirmation, yes, the affirmation. Um, 35 people voted, and out of those, I think 23 voted yes and 12 voted no. And so, um, and so um, you know, the, the Philippi's are not, going to be our next pastor. So um, in terms of that, it is sort of back to the drawing board, but I want to give you hope today as well in the sense that, first of all, number one, we do have an interim pastor. I know um, both Rob and Jeff, and especially Jeff, he's really worked hard and, you know, um, you know, so it's been, it's a lot of hard work, so to, to come up with the sermon every week. Um, and so we do have an interim pastor. Many of you may already know him. It's Pastor Mike Kimball. And he and his wife, Laura Kimball, run the Canaan Acres Christian Camp out there in Louisville. So maybe some of you know him just from district events or he and his wife. They're wonderful, oh, wonderful Christian people. So Pastor Mike, um, I believe Jeff is on again next Sunday. And then, is that right? Oh, no, you're right. Okay. So Pastor Mike will be here next Sunday, um, Labor Day weekend Sunday. I think it's September 2nd or something. So at any rate, um, Pastor Mike will be here, and he will take us through until we have a until we have a new pastor. So we're very, very happy about that and very grateful because he's, he's a wonderful, they're a wonderful family. Um, secondly, we haven't come to a complete standstill. In fact, the board tomorrow night, we're having a Zoom meeting with a potential candidate that um, our DS, Dave, Dave Lutz, recommended. So it's not like we're not working on it. We are gonna work on it until we find the right person and um, somebody that will lead us into the next phase of our, of our church family life. So I wanted to let you know that it's not like, you know, we are making progress, we are moving forward. And um, so I just wanted to let you know that. And um, if you need, maybe some of you are new to Alabaster, if you need a box, I put a couple out on the um, table there as you leave the sanctuary. So if you want a box, grab one. And um, I think that's it. Is that cover everything? <laughs> Okay. Thank so you so thank much, you. Katie. I appreciate that uh, update. And uh, why don't you all stand now and welcome one another to our service.
mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break, but they don't know you like
if you believe for it today. Huh? Man, this is when we got to believe. Praise God. This is when we got to believe. We gather together in the house of the Lord. And it's exciting to be able to say that we're two or three. Do we got at least two believers here this morning? Yeah, all over the place. Two or three are gathered together. He's in our midst. This Jesus Messiah. This Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, the, the healer, the deliverer, the savior, he's here. He's in this place. And as we sing this song, just worship him and exalt his name before we go to prayer this morning. Just allow Jesus, allow Jesus to have control of your heart. Allow Jesus to have control of this place. Have, let Jesus be in charge. Who became sin? Who knew no sin? That we might become His righteousness. Who humbled Himself and carried the cross. Love so
Thank you, Jesus, Messiah. Our Emmanuel, God with us. The rescuer of sinners when we were lost. We had no place to turn. You reached out for us. Some in horrible situations, and yet, God, you, you rescued us. Some of us who had fallen away from you, you pulled us back. Oh, our hearts go out to you, and thank you so much, Jesus. Lord, in this place, as we gather together, there are some here, Lord, who physically need a miracle. And we rejoice in the fact that Jesus, Messiah, you came. And we can stand on that word that says, by your stripes, we are healed. We pray for that little boy today or that little child who the parents left a picture on the door for us to pray. The little child with cancer. In Jesus' name, we come against cancer. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. For those in our midst today who are suffering with all sorts of maybe, maybe discouraged, maybe, maybe are heartbroken, whatever it is, Lord, depression, we just ask in Jesus' name that the, the strength and the power and the joy of the Lord, that resurrection power, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will flow in this place today. And oh, holy God, we just want to welcome you here. Lord, don't, don't just let this be just a, a normal day in your house. God, let this be a, a New Testament day. Where God, where you reach out and you touch every heart. Where no one can leave this place and they, 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 no one can leave here without saying they've been in the presence of God today. Move upon us, Lord, as you moved upon the waters at creation. Move upon our hearts. Move upon us this day. Transform us into what you want us to be. We just honor you today. We bless you. And we thank you, God, for your goodness. We pray over the offering today that, God, may it be multiplied together, pressed down, shaken together, running over for your glory and for your goodness. And we give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One more announcement before we, you, you may be seated before we go. We're going to start a new study in Sunday school on uh, the Bible nobodies who became somebodies. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't uh, get one of these copies, there's some of them in the, in the uh, cross-training class there. So pick one up and grab it. You'll, you'll love it. God bless you.
Amen. Thank you, praise team. Awesome. Isn't it wonderful? We're on the solid rock. And who is the rock? Jesus. Oh, that was really weak. Who is the solid rock? Jesus. There you go. Amen to that. Well, I must confess to you today that um, I was, this week, <laughs> I failed so uh, so miserably. I know that none of you ever do that, but man, I failed so miserably. Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips. Psalm 9, 1 says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wondrous deeds. Psalm 71, 9, or 8 says, my mouth is filled with your praise, declares the, the uh, declares, I can't read my writing, declares your splendor all day long. And lastly, Psalm 34 says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I failed at that this week. <laughs> Thank you. There's two of us that are honest here. Anybody else fail at that this week? Man, I failed. Yeah, a lot of it. I failed at that this week. I'll tell you, it was an incredible week. School. This was our first full week of school. And for those of you that are not aware of it and maybe watching online for the first time, I drive school bus. Or let me rephrase that: it drives me. <laughs> and um, I must confess to you that it was not the the greatest day, greatest week of all time. I have a brand new bus. See, that's what happens when you're old and you've been driving for a long time. I have this $90,000 taxi cab that I drive every day. And do you know that that $90,000 taxi cab broke down this week? <laughs> Brand spanking new bus, $90,000. First week of school, I said, man, you've got to be kidding me. Can't believe it. So they gave me another bus. They gave me another brand new bus. $92,000 bus. Much better bus than mine by $2,000. I got in this bus and it stinks. It smells like raccoon. I, I can say this because next week you got your real pastor. It smells like raccoon pee. It stinks. The raccoons are all around the bus. And the raccoons got in that bus and it stinks. Even the little kindergartners get on and say, it stinks in here, bus driver. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to tell them it's not me. <laughs> it just constantly, it stinks all day long. And then, and then you got the windows open and it's just blowing right in my face. And I'm just about to die. Sherry said she has a has a. a, a, a what is it, a freshener, air freshener thing in there? I'm going to just hang it on my sunglasses. <laughs> It'd be wonderful. So praise wasn't always coming off of my lips. It was like, Lord, what happened to my brand new bus? And then isn't that just like us? You got a new bus. It just happens to stink. We have human troubles, don't we? It started this morning when the alarm clock went off. Beep, beep, beep. The amazing thing about our house is the alarm clock is on my side of the bed. Sherry doesn't hear it. Or she doesn't move. It's kind of like when our kids were babies. She didn't hear the babies crying. But I did. As soon as I got up, then I hear her rustling. You know how that goes. You know, human troubles, our cars break down, we get a flat tire, that praise is always on our lips. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this flat tire. We get in a car wreck, oh, thank you, Jesus, for this car wreck. It just blessed me so much today. We get to, behind somebody who is texting while they're driving. If any of you do that, I want you to know that that just drives bus drivers insane. And they're sitting there, and the light's turning, and the light turns, and they're on their phone, and they're texting, and they're texting. And I want you to know that I have trouble in the area of blessing the Lord continually when somebody's on their cell phone. Thank you, Jesus. I hope it's a long message. 
Thank you, Jesus. I hope they're texting for a long time. Nah, nah. See, human, human issues and human troubles are so much different than spiritual battles. Spiritual battles, you know the ones, those, those family curses of addictions. Maybe a family curse of alcoholism or drug abuse so different than just having a flat tire that battlefield of the mind that that joyce myers talks about or that that depression that discouragement those are some spiritual issues that that man they are so hard to overcome and and in the midst of those spiritual issues sometimes we have a hard time praising god don't we Sometimes we have a, oh, yes, yeah, a couple of us on this side are honest, a couple of you over here are asleep, and those in the middle, I'm not sure about. God really genuinely understands that there are occasions when the spiritual heaviness comes upon us, that we have a hard time praising the Lord. So I've come to the realization and determined that it's my choice. I can either serve God and rejoice in the Lord, or I don't have to. I can, I can be miserable if I want to be miserable. We have, we have some people that I work with who, I won't mention their names because I pray they're watching today. If you are, I hope you are listen to this. They are determined to be miserable. It doesn't matter. I mean, they are determined to be joy suckers. They'll suck the joy right out of you in a matter of seconds, all right? And then there are other people that walk in in the morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? It's, it's fun to be around those people. There's a couple of guys I want to share with you this morning, and I want to entitle this, Raise a Hallelujah. I think it's time we raise a hallelujah. Sunday school class was awesome today, by the way. It was really, really good. And, and you guys, and, and, and Bonnie, and Mark, and, and Katie, you guys were like, teaching this class this morning it was it was really awesome i was sitting there i was laughing i thought man they're they're talking about stuff i'm gonna be talking about i want to talk about these guys raising a hallelujah you ever hear of a guy named paul and his buddy silas okay okay you got to respond here or... thank you pete give it here bring it on it's good to have you back pete Paul and Silas are in a town called Philippi. Philippi, this city was, a, was a, a, an amazing city. Just a, a, a little background on the city. It was, uh, it was named after the son of Alexander the Great. It was a military Roman outpost. It was, it was just filled with Roman soldiers everywhere and filled with Roman gods and just it was just a an ungodly place Paul decides of all places he was going to go there and raise a hallelujah I love that so him and Silas they take off on this missionary journey to Philippi and and as they go they find out this amazing thing there is no synagogue in the city there's no place there's no church there's no place to worship. There's no place to gather together. In fact, there are actually less than 10 Jewish males in the whole city. And here comes Paul. Talk about a mission field, huh? The Jews that lived there, they had this routine. Rather than going to church because they didn't have a building, they would go down to the river. Now, some, some of us, that would... Some of us probably would bring a fishing pole, but they went there to, to preach. Or, excuse me, they went there to pray. And so Paul, thinking, wow, this is a great place to go, I'll go down there also. And the Jews would go there regularly and pray beside the water for ritual cleaning. Here's where our story, uh-oh. Emily told me it's not on. There we go. Acts 16 13 on the sabbath we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer because that's where the the 10 jews would go to pray all right and we sat down and began to speak to 
the women who had gathered there, and one of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. And she was a worshiper of God. Isn't that cool? She was a worshiper of God before the preacher arrived. Let that one sink in for a second. Before the preacher arrived, she was a worshiper of God. I want you to know that you can be a worshiper of God before our preacher arrives. Okay? She was a worshiper of God, and the Lord opened her heart, I love this, to respond to Paul's message. And when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her house. And if you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded them. Here it is, just the, the Jeff Dean paraphrase. This woman named Lydia responded to the spoken words of Paul. I hope and pray that somehow we get some response to the, to the words that are spoken today. She invited them to her house. Don't know what they were having, but I know one thing. There had to have been some kind of little mini revival going on there. That was the very start of the church in Philippi. What a great day that had to have been for Paul. Here was Paul. Silas, Timothy, and Dr. Luke. That was quite a, quite a ministry team. Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Dr. Luke were all gathered together in Lydia's house. Man, wouldn't that have been a conversation? That would have been awesome. And they were enjoying ministry, warm hospitality. They were being encouraged and encouraging each other. They were excited about these people who wanted so much to serve the Lord. Then on one particular walk to the river for prayer, they encountered this demon-possessed slave girl. And she continued to taunt them for many days. And I love this. And Paul had finally had enough. Check this out. Acts 16, 16. And once when we were going to a place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit, a demonic spirit, by which she predicted the future. And she earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. By the way, let me just make a little sidebar here. This is my last time I get to preach for a long time, so I might as well just make you all mad at me this morning. Don't get caught up in a fortune-tellers. You know who holds my future is Jesus. Don't be going to fortune tellers. Don't be reading your horoscope. God doesn't care. Okay? Don't, don't, don't do that. Find your direction from the Lord. And she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God. Now here's this demon-possessed woman, girl, who's saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. Remember when... Uh, when Jesus walked up to the, to the guys that were possessed, or the guy that was possessed in the, in the garden, or in the, in the cemetery, and the demon cried out, what do we have to do with you, son of the most high God? See, the demons in hell know who Jesus is. They know the truth. Remember, Paul we know, Apollos we know, Jesus we know. Who are you? That's what one scripture says. These men are servants of the Most High who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days, and finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the Spirit left. She was telling the truth. These are guys that were telling them how to be saved. These are men of God. They were telling the truth, but, but Paul understood that even though they were speaking the truth, it was being spoken by the wrong spirit. If you remember how God works, here we are in Luke chapter 1. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in a hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Who was Zechariah? John the Baptist's daddy, okay? And when Elizabeth, that was John's mother, 
When Elizabeth, that was Mary's cousin. I feel like Columbo here. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you who are among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in the womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise. Mary had not yet told Elizabeth that she was pregnant. She had not yet told Elizabeth, not yet, that she had seen the angel. She had not yet told Elizabeth, but yet the Spirit of God had spoken to Elizabeth. I love that. See, that's the distinct difference between between what was happening with Paul and Silas there and this demonic woman saying, these men are speaking the truth, then they leaping for joy. I want you to know when God speaks, there's joy in the camp. Thank you, Mark. When God speaks, there's joy in the camp. When God speaks, there's something, there's something, there's a, there's a, there's a raise a hallelujah when God speaks. And the crowd was stunned when this once wide-eyed girl, she was wild, <clears throat> sat still and silent. See, where there is God, there is peace. When God speaks the word, there is peace. Now, don't, don't get away from me here, because I know that sometimes you're going to have to hear the rest of the story to see where that statement's going. The whole crowd should have been excited and happy that here was this girl who was, who was a wild thing. I was, I was driving my bus this week, and I was just wondering how many of them poor girls, poor boys, come from horrible homes. Dear God, help them. Dear God, help them. And here's this wild, wild girl all of a sudden, she sat still and quiet. Not everybody was happy about it. The slave girl's master caused a riot in the streets because he was making money off of her. And he was furious about the fact that all of a sudden, man, my income is gone. These guys cast that demon out. Now she can't tell the future anymore. And he had Paul and Silas see grabbed and they were beaten with rods and thrown into Roman dungeon with their feet can't you imagine this with their feet in stocks and they can't move just one moment before they saw the miracle of God just one moment before they saw victory just one moment before they saw the power of the name of Jesus being revealed and now one moment later they're in an inner prison they're in a horrible state of affairs and then let's be honest these men are not God these men are God's servants they're in an inner dark prison, a dungeon. They had just seen Lydia and her family saved just days before. And they were riding on this high. Man, they were excited. And now, all of a sudden, they see this demon girl and they rebuke her in the name of Jesus. And the demon leaves. And man, they had to be on this high. And then instantly, now they're in prison. And don't you think that being human beings, they might have said, hey, God, why'd this happen? I was, just, I, was just, I was just doing what you told me to do. Why'd this happen? The, the winter of our life, as was spoken about in class this morning. I thought we were in your will, God. I thought we were doing what you wanted, God. I thought this was, this was it. I, I want you to know that 
even in the dark places and the hard times of our life, if we continue to serve the Lord, even in those times we're in God's will. We're still in his will. If God's word is true that says, I'll never leave you, or what? Or forsake you. If that is true, how many of you believe that is true? I believe that is true. Then even in the darkest times of our life, God is there. Acts 16, 22 says, And the crowd joined in to attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. <laughs> I, I hope that doesn't happen today if you don't like what I say. That was a joke. <laughs> and after they had been severely flogged, how many of you know severely flogged means severely flogged? I mean, it wasn't just a slap on the wrist. I mean, they were, they were bloody mess. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. And when, when he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell. That's where the worst of the worst were. That's where the rats and the spiders and darkness was. When he received his orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in stocks. This is amazing. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Woo, that's cool. Now, if that would have been me, I'd have been singing all right. I'd have been singing, gloom, despair, and agony on. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom. Come on, y'all want to sing, don't you? Despair and agony on me. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. I'd be singing gloom, despair, and agony on me. I'd be saying, hey, God, what, what's going on here? What, 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 what's happening? Why, why did this happen to me, God? I don't know what they were singing. They, they might have been singing this. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and I gave him a firm place to stand. And he put a new song in my mouth. Hallelujah. He put a new song in my mouth. A hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. They might have been saying, Lord, we don't even know the words of this song, but God put a, put a new song in my, my mouth. I don't know. If it were nowadays, that new song could have been, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. That new song might have been something to the fact of Jesus Messiah, name above all names. That new song might have been, might have been my, my favorite all-time song we do. He knows my name. Can't you imagine Paul in the inner city, in, in, her, in your prison? He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he hears me when I call. Even in the darkness, he hears us. Even in the darkness, he sees our tears. Even when we've been doing what we know is the will of God, and yet it still seems to be a mess. I'm here to tell us today, in the name of Jesus, it's time to hang on, hang on, hang on. When I was a kid, we used to sing the song, Hold the Fort for I Am Coming. What a, how many of you know that? What a ridiculous song. And everybody would pull out their hanky, and they would, they would be... Hold the fort for I am coming. Meaning, we're going to give up till you get here, Jesus. Just, we're just going to hang on. The Bible says the violent take it by force. It's not time for us to just hold on. It's time for us to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? 
It's time for us to advance the kingdom of God. It's time for us to go forward in the name of Jesus, not lag behind. So in the midst of throbbing pain, in the midst of sitting in stocks, they began to sing and, and they began to praise the Lord and they began to worship God in the dark dungeon of their life. When we praise God and when we worship God, great things happen. About midnight. I love that. I love that. I love that so much. I, I, God does incredible things at midnight. See, they say nothing good happens at dark. Because that's when Satan lurks and that's when you get, people get in trouble and everything. Well, I want you to know that that's why he's so intent on making the darkness bad. Because at midnight, it was dark, but God can do great things in the darkness. That's what we were talking about in Sunday school this morning. God can do great things in the darkness. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. I like that. And suddenly, there's another one of those favorite words of mine, suddenly. Oh, God, where are you at? Hey, suddenly. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open. Can't you imagine that? That would be so cool. Once the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. You say, well, it was just an earthquake. Let me just explain this to you. Chains don't fall off a wrist in an earthquake. You hear that? Chains that are binding us up, they don't fall off in an earthquake. If nothing else, the, the building falls down on top of us and stuff. But chains don't just come off. That had to be a God thing, a divine God thing. And once the prison doors flew open and everyone chains came loose and the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, go ahead. <laughs> no. Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. We are all here. Before the jailer could kill himself, Paul's saying, don't blame yourself. This is, a, this is a God thing. Don't harm yourself. This is a God thing. Acts 16, 30 says, and he brought them out. This is the jailer and says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them, washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. And the jailer brought them into his house, set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. What must I do to be saved? I'm telling you flat out, if I were Paul... I'm just, I'm just going to be honest with you because I already told you that praise doesn't always come off my lips. I want it to. I'm trying. I'm working on it. But sometimes it doesn't always happen. But if I were Paul, I would have run for my life. I'd have let that jailer kill himself. I'd have said, I'm out of here. This must be a God thing. I'm out of here. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. But Paul was being led by the Holy Spirit. Paul was willing to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. From start to finish, Paul had one clear goal. He had one focus in mind, and that focus was to preach Jesus, preach Christ, preach Jesus, preach Christ. If it meant he had to be shackled in a Roman dungeon, choking on his own blood, so be it. Paul knew he was where he needed to be. I'm almost done. Hang on. Lydia's house needed salvation. Lydia's house needed, needed, needed to hear the word. She worshiped God, but she didn't understand. She needed somebody to be able to, to explain the true salvation of Jesus. 
That slave girl needed delivered and set free. That brutal Roman jailer needed to get saved. So I would say that Paul had a pretty good week of ministry. He had a pretty good week of ministry. Some would say, oh, no, if he was really of God, man, he, you know, because God would never let anything happen to us. Well, if that's the case, he must love you more than me because a lot of stuff happens to me. Paul had a pretty good week of ministry. How about us? I'm going to ask the praise team to come, if you would, and get ready to sing. How about us? Sometimes Satan wants us to feel that we are out of God's will if everything is not smooth sailing. We were talking in Sunday school this morning in, in, in cross-training class about Jesus being asleep on the boat and the, and the waves were rocking and rocking and they were all terrified and scared to death. And, 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 and the thought came to me, well, what if the disciples would have just joined Jesus in the boat? What if they would have said, Jesus, I'm, I'm terrified of these waves that I'm going through right now, so Jesus, can I, can I join you? Because I know, Jesus, you're not going to drown. Wouldn't it be awesome if, if they would have just went down and said, hey, scoot over, kind of nudged him a little bit? You know, Jesus would have made room for them because he makes room for everybody. He makes room for us all. So here's God's plan. Here's God's plan. Sometimes it's a mountain. And sometimes it's a valley. But in the midst of it, he's always there. He's always there. In the midst of it, we can speak the name of Jesus and raise a hallelujah. We can choose, we can choose in the midst of, 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 of just the, the normal common things of life, flat tires or whatever, we can, we can choose. I remember one time my dad was working on a car and smashed his thumb. Smashed his thumb. And I remember him doing this. I remember him going, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, Dad, what in the world are you thanking Jesus for? You just smacked your thumb. He said, I thanked him. Then I didn't hit the other nine. It's time for us to raise a hallelujah. It's time for us to understand that whatever you're facing, bad doctor's appointment, car accidents, unexpected deaths like I mentioned last week, whatever we're facing, we can choose to raise a hallelujah. Though none go with me, Still, I will follow. I will serve the Lord all the days of my life. When I came to Christ, I've said before, I didn't have this prenuptial agreement that says, God, if you're with me all the time and I always feel your presence and I always know you're right there, then I'll serve you. No. I had this commitment that says, God, I'm going to love you and I'm going to serve you. But the wonderful thing about that is God has that commitment also. I'm going to love you in spite of you. It's time we raise a hallelujah. Come on, stand, if you would. It's time to worship the Lord in the presence of the enemy. It's time to worship the Lord. It's time to worship the Lord in the presence. Come on, let's sing it together. Let's sing it together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of the
this line right here. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Can't you just... Can't you just hear in the midst of that dark circle, in the midst of that inner court, can't you just, can't you just hear the, some of the prisoners starting to say, hey, Paul, Silas, shut up. What do you got singing about? He says, oh, just listen. Just listen. I'm going to raise a hallelujah here in a minute. Just listen. You understand where I'm, why I can sing in the midst of this darkness. You understand why I can sing in the midst of all this blood and all the, all the, all the horrible things that have happened because I serve. I serve a risen Savior. I serve a, a, a Savior who came out of an empty grave, a tomb just like this, and he came and set us free. I serve him. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. Yes, we do, Lord. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. Getting louder and louder, he is. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of a mystery. I raise a happens see when we're in the midst of the darkness and and then all of a sudden the presence of God comes and we start worshiping God and we start we start praising some some amazing things happen it affects people around us instead of that old gloomy person in the cell next to him instead of them saying Paul would you shut up now it's hey Paul would you sing a little louder Hey, Paul, would you sing a little louder? I need to hear, I need to be encouraged a little more. It, it begins to happen all around, and, and it, begins to, it begins to affect others. And sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Come on, let's do that. Sing a little louder.
Oh, uh-huh. 